Rebecca Rogers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Regardless, I'm so happy you're here. And today I have my friend Chloe hanging out with us. Hi this guys. Chloe. You can find me at C H L zero E Bean on everything. Literally <laughs> on everything. I want to put like a little link in the description if you love her as much as I do. I swear we met and our souls were like, where have you been all my life? But it's Tuesday. So you know what time it is? It's apple picking day. Every week people submit stories and submissions to my subreddit r slash am I the bad apple where they're not sure if they acted appropriately or not. We read the stories, we give our opinions, we decide if they were a good apple, a bad apple, a crab apple. Sometimes we all agree, sometimes we disagree, but that's okay because everyone has different life experiences. We all come from different walks of life that give us different lenses to look through and that's okay. We learn from each other through conversation. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Let's go apple picking! Woo! Woo! Let's go! It. Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for asking my girlfriend and her sister to cover up? I, 26 male, have decided to work on my flexibility and mobility due to previous soccer injuries. My girlfriend of two years recommended I try yoga. She does yoga three times a week and is incredibly flexible and agile. She told me she would talk to her sister as she's a personal trainer and could help us. I agreed and my girlfriend, myself, and her younger sister as the teacher have been doing yoga twice a week at my house for the last three weeks. I feel fantastic and I really feel like it's helping me. Yesterday, my mom called me and asked if I was still gonna give her the old freezer that I no longer use. I said yeah and told her to come on and get it or I would just take it to her the next day. The freezer's in my garage where we do yoga and usually I do yoga shirtless and my girlfriend and her sister are in sports bras and sweats. In the middle of our yoga session, I get a notification that someone's at my front door and it was my parents. I head to the door and put on a shirt and I asked my girlfriend and her sister to put on a top also. My girlfriend gave me daggers for eyes and her sister also gave me a very confused who the heck are you kind of look. I said, please, my parents are coming in and I just want everyone to cover up for a second. I let my parents in the house and when I came back, the girls are still in their sports bras. My parents greet them and they leave shortly after and my girlfriend's sister ends up leaving before we even finish our yoga session telling me that I'm no longer her client because she's the teacher and she felt like I disrespected her. I was confused and asked my girlfriend what was going on. Dude, she's privileged. She gets crapped on like that all the time for her body and you need to apologize now for telling her to cover up or it just makes you look like a jerk. I told her I'll clear things up with her sister, but I'm not gonna apologize because I wasn't trying to be rude. I just wanted her to put a shirt on while my parents were there. I didn't mean anything bad by it. My girlfriend doesn't believe me and said it's the same thing and that I'm trying to police her and her sister and the things that they wear. I did start to think about it and her sister's a good person. I just, I don't necessarily think I overstep. So am I the bad apple? Oh man, <laughs> this is controversial. Um, <laughs> I get it in a standpoint of like respect, but in, a, in a, another way, I'm like, don't ever tell a girl to like cover up because why? I think that if they were at the parents' house and the parents were like, hey, I'm not super comfortable with you working out in like your sports bra, yeah. I think that would be a different story because that's their house, that's their comfort levels. Would I necessarily agree with it? No, but you know, it's their house. They're, I didn't think of they that. need to be comfortable. Yeah. But for them to be in a workout session having to cover up for someone that's coming over, I don't yeah. really agree with that. I know it's not the same situation, but it always makes me think of that holiday times where the dad's like, hey, Uncle Bill's coming over, go change your top. Oh. Like, you, you, oh. Why? Mm -hmm. Don't come over right now then, or don't have them over. Or, yeah. And I'm not saying that the parents would be having any kind of gross, sinister thoughts or anything like that, but then just say, hey, we're busy right now. You're right. I didn't even consider, they're, they're not even at the parents' house. Like, no. they have no right or no say of anything. Right. Like, and it's just, like, I totally get that that guy, it's his house, it's his garage. I mean, it would continue throughout the whole relationship. Like, say you go on vacation with the family's parents. Oh, cover up, even though we're, like, on a boat, please, because my parents have never seen your body before. Like, they cannot. <laughs> Again, like I know we just said if it was the parents' house, it's their house, their rules kind of thing. And I get that it's this guy's place, but it's not like he's like, oh, in general, 
you can't wear a sports bra. Oh, in general, you have to cover up. Yeah. I just think it's very strange that in the middle of their workout routine, he's like, hold up real quick, I gotta do something, which is fine, but hold up, I gotta do something really quick. Go put on more clothes, yeah. get your clothes all sweaty, and then in five minutes when they leave, you can take it off. I'd be like, I didn't bring that, any. That's just my clothes. <laughs> That just feels very excessive. Yeah. And I, I, I don't get the whole like, oh, cover up, you're inappropriate. How is that yeah. any different than a swimsuit? It's Your biceps are showing. Your biceps. <laughs> and again, I, because I don't want to contradict myself, I get that it's his place, but I just, I don't like that it's a, it's fine every other time, but not the five minutes that my family's here. I just think the whole like, oh, you have to cover up because other people will see you. Like you're not even in anything inappropriate. You're, they're in sweatpants and a sports bra. It's like, I thought we got over this in like middle school. <laughs> right. but the shoulders. The shoulders it's are still... not that attractive. <laughs> not the collarbones. <laughs> Now, I don't really understand, oh, you're just being mean to her because of her body. No, I think that's like a her problem. Like she needs to, she shouldn't be that sensitive. I'm just not understanding what they think he was trying to say. <laughs> like, I don't even know what like, they your think he was getting at. I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. If someone can clarify for us who's privileged. What it is, like, I just want to know what it is they think he was trying to say. Because when I read this story, I hear it as a, he wants them to cover up when the parents are over because modesty kind of thing. I'm not understanding what she thinks he, I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something, yeah. you know? Because I just, I'm confused. We just can't, we don't get it. <laughs> I think crab apple. Yeah? I think he didn't, like his intentions were pure, but okay. like he really didn't consider it the women. Like, I think I will also go with crab apple. I think it's honestly just that old, outdated mindset it's of like, oh. like there are people, women, cover up. Yeah, like our oh, shoulders. Crap. They're what? He's 26. He's my age. <laughs> oh my God. If my in laws came to our house and I was in a sports bra and Avery was like, hey, go put on a shirt. Dumb ways to, to die. die. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I will go with Crab Apple. I do think it's a outdated mindset that needs to be unlearned. In my opinion, now if they were like in underwear, yes, may, like I think that yeah. would be it. Because I know there's gonna be some keyboard warriors that are like, yeah. what if they were like had no clothes on and blah blah blah. Like they're gonna come up with some crazy yep. scenario. Got That's it. different, okay? Like anyone in their own house, like yes, everyone's allowed to do whatever they want in their own house. Anyone, if the doorbell rang and they were in their underwear, they'd put on a robe or they'd put on something. But like if I'm in a sports bra and sweatpants, I'll open the door in that. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Sports bra is like the same as a man being topless. Like they, right. they're not required right. to wear a shirt. No. Like it's normal. Lame. It should be normal for a girl. Crab apple. Crab. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Heck yeah. Apple number two. Am I the bad apple for being upset that my sister didn't invite me to her wedding? My 18 female sister, 26 female, got married last Wednesday. She's been with her now husband for over seven years. So I basically grew up with him, but they never had the time or the money to get married. This month, they decided they'd just get married at the courthouse, and the date kept changing until about three days before it actually happened, but I was excited. I had been waiting for my sister to get married to her husband for so long. I mean, again, I basically grew up with him in my life. But when they announced the official date, they said that it would be parents only. I was really upset, but I let it go because it's my sister and I just wanted her to be happy. They just said they didn't want too many people there. She's my half sister, so it's three sets of parents and we have four siblings, which would bring about 16 people and that's just her side. That's not even including his, so I get it. It's a lot of people. Anyways, her and her husband decided they would still get dressed for a fancy wedding and she told me that I'd be able to see her in her dress and makeup before the wedding. But then she took it back. She said it wasn't fair to my other sister who was willing to drive three hours to see her because she couldn't make it at the end. But I later found out that was a lie. I also wasn't allowed to see her while everyone took pictures or go to the celebratory dinner afterwards for some of the same reasons. It wasn't fair. Whatever, I let it go and I just video called to see her and say how beautiful she was and I was really happy for her. I mean, she's been waiting for this for so long, but then my parents got home. As I was watching the video of the ceremony from my parents' phone, I found out it wasn't just 
just parents. She had her grandmother there, which is fine. I guess she's like a second mother to her, but she also had her best friend friend there. And I know it's her best friend. Why wouldn't she be there? But why wouldn't I be there? Why couldn't I see my sister in her dress? I don't know why my sister chose to do it this way, but her friend being there felt like a slap in the face to me. I missed something so important in her life, but because of what? Why didn't she want me there? I haven't said anything to my sister because I don't want to ruin her bliss at the moment, and I probably won't, but it's made me question our relationship a lot. I don't know if it's right to feel this way or if I'm just being selfish. I don't know. Am I the bad apple for being upset with her? You're joking. This girl has every right to like feel all the emotions she has. Like I can't imagine not going to my brother's wedding. Yeah, I would be like, like I would be so. There's too many people. High. Then like get rid of some like fifth cousins, like fifth generations or whatever, and have your like immediate family there. You know what I'm saying? I do think that this girl is completely valid. Yeah. To have all of her feelings. I'm picking up the sense that their relationship might be a little bit more one-sided than she realizes. Again, I think that she's completely valid to feel, like everyone's feelings are valid. Like, yeah. you really wanted to be there, you feel like this guy was already a part of your family, you are clearly very, or wants you to be very close to your sister, but the sister didn't really want her there. I do feel bad for her. Because clearly, this appears to be one, like she's, they're almost 10 years apart. So I feel like this might have been a sister that she worshipped the ground that she walked on. You know, yeah. looked up to her, this was her role model. And I think she might be finding that those feelings aren't necessarily reciprocated, which is so sad. I'm not saying yeah. that I think that she's wrong at all. That's the situation that I think that it is. Like, I do think that the bride is welcome to have whoever she wants at the wedding, whoever she doesn't want at the wedding. Like she said she wanted close family. Now, to get upset that, oh, I just want parents, and well, she had the grandma there. That, <laughs> no, no. But you also have to think, she said that this is her half sister, yeah. and she also has other full sisters that she grew up with. I don't know when their parents got together, but there's a 10 year age gap, meaning that there's 10 years at least mm -hmm. where the sister that got married spent with her full-blooded sisters. So it wouldn't surprise me if this half-sister was not the sibling that she was the closest to, you know? Yeah. Which again, is still so sad. It just kind of goes back to the point of- It's sad. Yes. But like, you do need to respect the bride. Yes. You know, it's kind of like no kids. One of my best friends is getting married this summer and she only wants her household, his mom, his sister, and like my household, but my like our households have been best friends since we were like three. We've been yeah. best friends for like 20 years. And that's it. And that's yeah. okay. And does she have a bunch of cousins and aunts? Yeah. It gets hard. You're she, right. You do need to like narrow it down and like it's a lot of money. It's a lot so of money. much money. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with being upset. I think she's finding that the relationship again is more one-sided than she thought. I also don't think that the bride was in the wrong for narrowing it down and only having who she wanted to have she's there. She's staying true to herself. Right, like. exactly, because like she said, you know, if they had three sets of parents and we have four siblings, which is about 16 people with his siblings as well. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Yeah. And so I don't think that it was wrong of her to just have the parents, the grandparents, and her best friend. That's the best friend, it's like an automatic, like right. they come in a pair, you know what I'm right. saying? Right, like, exactly. Now, I will be clear, Ethan doesn't watch my content, but just in case my brother is watching this, I'm going to your wedding. This is not an invitation, no. I don't know when it's gonna be, but one day, <laughs> yeah. But I'm going good apple. Good apple. Oh, yes. Good apple or like, good apple. She's leaving me hanging. <laughs> Wind it up. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for saying my sister doesn't dictate what I do in my own home? I, 42 female, am the eldest of eight siblings, and this particular story concerns my youngest sister, Alina, 23. Me and my husband have two kids, 16 and 13, and Alina's staying with us for four months because she's starting a new college and needs some time to figure out housing. Alina's been here for a couple of weeks so far, and last night, she made dinner for everyone because she said she wanted to. The way dinner works in our household is I dish up the food and then my kids take it to their rooms to eat. We obviously have family dinner too, but this is just more convenient for all of us as we don't have to spend time setting the table each day and we can all eat at different times if needed and it just works. I know it isn't for everyone and that's okay, but it's just what works for our family and Alina knows this. 
Alina told me a few days ago that she wants to cook a meal for everybody and what day would be best. I told her Tuesday night and she said, okay, just make sure that you keep that day free so that we can have dinner together. She never actually said she wanted everyone to sit down at the table. I obviously thought that dinner together just meant she would be cooking for all of us since she normally only cooks for herself, but she wanted everyone to sit down, which we don't usually do. So last night she made fried dumplings, orange chicken, fried rice, and chocolate cake for dessert. I went to the kitchen to thank her and saw her setting up the table. I told her, Alina, you don't need to do that. We'll just take food from the pot and go sit wherever we want to sit. My 13 year old started saying that she was hungry, so I went to go get food for her since everything was finished. Alina stopped me and told me to wait a few minutes and that we'll just eat together. I told her, again, that's not really how things work here. And one of my kids is hungry now, but my 16 year old eats later. So we're just gonna take from the pot, eat where we want, it'll be fine. Alina then said she was gonna serve the dumplings first and then the chicken and rice and the cake after. So again, she wanted us to eat together. I repeated, we can get the main food at once and cake later. And if anyone wants seconds, they'll come get it. But we're not setting the table. We're not sitting down together. And you're not gonna dictate dinner time at our house. Alina looked upset and said that she just wanted to have a nice dinner together and involve the kids. I had enough at this point and I told her, I know my kids and my family and she doesn't get to dictate what we do in my home. My husband saw what was going on and told Alina thanks, but we know how to serve ourselves and we don't need any help with that. Alina eventually understood, but she was acting so sulky and was giving me the cold shoulder this morning. So immature, but my parents are telling me that I over reacted a little bit even though I don't think so. So was I the bad apple? Alina had me in the first half. I was like, I completely get it. Like family time, it means a lot. And like, even if it's not something you normally do, like it's good to switch it up every once in a <laughs> while. But then at the end, I was like, okay, you're being a little pushy. And I feel like the sister, I feel like if she like constantly said like, oh, that's not what we do. Like, that's not how we do it. The kids are used to this, blah, da da da. Then just kind of like respect it. What got me and what really pushed me over the edge is when it says that Alina specifically asked, Hey, I want to cook a meal for everybody. Yeah. When would be best? Keep this day open and we can have dinner together. And the sister was like, well, she didn't clarify that we were going to sit together. She said dinner together. So like for me, I didn't necessarily see it as her being pushy. I more so saw it as her being very confused of like, didn't we just talk about this? Like, I'm with Alina. Team Alina. I'm Team with Alina. <laughs> I personally have dinner every night with my parents and it's a mm -hmm. really good quality time. Mm -hmm. We did every night when I was still living with my parents. It's like every something night. Look to. Yes, yeah. and even if, because my dad sometimes he worked really late, he, my dad worked really hard. And even if we ate a little earlier, we would still find something to snack on yeah. Yeah. with him at the table. And every day we talk about the highs and lows of the day. And yeah. like that's. I like that. That's what we did, even to this day. I'm 26 years old. I've been married for almost four years. Every night night at dinner time, my parents call me. I understand that not everyone does that, and that's okay, like Avery's family never ate together. He thought it was so weird. Really? <laughs> he was like, almost a culture shock, you know? Yeah, I mean, it is different, like gathering together, just sitting yes. there like, oh, we need to talk. Yeah, like, even, you'd be surprised, like when my, my, the various girlfriends that my brother has dated throughout his life, they think it's so strange. And that's okay, like it's yeah. just, it, it's, it yeah. really opened our eyes to how not everyone does that, and that's okay. There's nothing Nothing wrong with that but I do think that when this girl straight up asked specifically what day just, yeah what day she says she wants to cook a meal for everyone what day would be best keep that day free so we can have dinner together you didn't misunderstand at this point I feel bad for her I feel like, so bad because she like went out of her way time. yeah right like cooking how she, long it took like she made a three or four course meal and dessert specifically <laughs> says she wanted to involve the kids and have family time because yeah. these are these aren't random kids. These are her nieces and nephews. And again, if they didn't have the conversation about what day I want to have dinner together, I might think a little bit differently. Yeah. But you can't say we had that conversation. Oh, that's not what we do. Like, yeah, that's why she asked, "What day can we do this? And like, even, what day can we change your mind?" Right. Like, yeah. And like, keep that free. Have dinner together. But even if there was confusion, why does it hurt you so badly? Oh, I didn't know that's what you meant. Sure. Even I can sit down with you. Okay, your 13-year-old is hungry. Okay. 
that's fine. Why can't your sister sit down? Yeah. And for, even for the husband to come up and be like, that's not how we do things. I can't believe that. Avery Rogers would never. I just, I feel bad for Alina. So I'm going Bad Apple. Bad Apple. B-A-D capital. Apple number four. Am I the Bad Apple for spying on my military boyfriend? Five months ago, I, 18 female, started dating my friend, 18 male, that I'd known for three years. And we'll call him L. We started dating during Elle's first military leave, so it was long distance. About four months later, Elle was worried that the distance was getting hard on me. I reassured him that it wasn't, so we agreed to continue dating. About two weeks later though, the conversation resurfaced, including different views on religion and a reminder that our next five to 10 years would be distant. We decided we'd date till his leave was over, about three to four months, and then talk about our thoughts then. We'd been good friends for three years, so I wasn't worried that a breakup would stop our friendship or anything. A few days later, Al was home for a week for Christmas. He came to a family Christmas party and met my mom's family and everyone really liked him. We exchanged Christmas gifts a few days later and said our goodbyes. His plane left the next day at 6 a.m. and I couldn't be up early enough to see him off. Two days later, I was driving to work and when I was waiting to turn left, I saw a car that was the same make and model as Elle's. I didn't think much of it until I saw that the driver looked exactly like him. The car even had LED lights, which I knew that my boyfriend had. I called him on the phone and he didn't answer. I texted him when I got to my house and see if he'd have time to call later. And I didn't want to call him too much, just wanted to see when he had free time. And he texted me four hours later that he was preoccupied. I told my coworkers about it and they agreed that it was too coincidental and one of my coworkers offered that I use her phone to call him since I wasn't sure if he'd answer if he saw me on the caller ID. I called him on my coworker's phone and he answered in two rings. When he heard my voice, he was caught off guard. I asked him about what I saw and he said that he gave his car back to the original owners when he left and not to worry about it, that's probably just who I saw. But he bought that car two years ago. How is he still in contact with the original owners? I decided to drive past his house and just see if the car was gone and not in the driveway. And if it was gone, then great, he told the truth. But when I got there, his car was in the driveway. The next morning, a friend agreed to go to his house with me and when we got there, his car wasn't in the driveway. We knocked and his aunt answered and I asked if he was home and she told me he just left. I then asked for his dad and she invited us in. I introduced myself and my friend helped me explain that I was dating Elle, but he lied to me about when he was leaving for the military again. His dad said that he wasn't even aware Elle was dating anybody and he would have a talk with him when he got home. We left and Elle texted me five minutes later. He said he didn't appreciate being spied on and he only lied to me so that I wouldn't get more attached because he's been trying to break up with me for months. He said we were done and that he didn't want to hear any arguments about it because there was no way he was taking me back. I said there's nothing to argue about. He lied to me and if he wanted to break up so bad he should have done that instead of just lying and going along with it. Elle never replied and I haven't heard from him since. But thinking back to it, I wonder if I handled the situation wrong. He lied to me, but we were in a relationship and I should have trusted him, right? And I think that me spying on him ruined the possibility of us being friends again. So, was I the bad apple for spying on him? No. Oh my gosh, we have no. so much to unpack no. here. No. How long have they been dating? Only a few months. A few months are like four years. At 18? When you're younger, like it does Especially feel like- Especially younger, that cre they, yeah, I, yeah. that's trauma being stored in the back of your brain, like being lied yeah. to, being cheated on, like that's something you'll carry forever. When someone breaks your trust like that, like the first person to break your trust, that is- Is bad. Is wild, it's, like you never really fully get it back like you do but you don't you know the person i was with before avery awful human being absolutely awful human being and avery he is so good it's to amazing. me he's amazing you guys are like awesome. yeah thanks i like him a little bit just a smidge um and i know that he would never ever do anything to hurt me like that but you know you always have that panicked voice in the back of your head because you know yep. what people are capable yeah. of an old boyfriend fake friend whatever it is when people break your trust like that, you always have that voice in the back yep. of your head that's like, but what if 
Hey, wait, what was the stalking? What was this? Like, I feel like she wasn't necessarily she wasn't. stalking. No. She was like, she was like, oh, I just want to see what my boyfriend well, is it, up to. It wasn't like, even that. It was literally like she was driving. Yeah. And she saw his car. He's gaslighting. Driven. Yes, he was gaslighting. victim. She saw, she's like, whoa, I like saw him on the road. That's crazy. You wanted to call him. Hey, did you not leave? Because she, he was supposed to have been gone already. Or just yeah. to say, hey, you'll never guess. I saw someone that looked exactly like you. Like, I don't know which one she was calling for, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I call my boyfriend like, hey. Hey, guess what? Yeah. There's a joke in my family that when my husband still worked in the office, I would call him 17 times a day. <laughs> only for the fact that, like, I'm bored at home alone. You're like, babe, I just want to say like, I had my coffee. I pet my cat. <laughs> it's not anything other than the fact that, like, I'm bored. I want so much. I just want to talk to somebody. Pay attention. So for those of you that don't do content creation, like content creators will know, it's so isolating, and you're just like at home twiddling your thumbs every day, like <laughs> I need human interaction. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with her trying to call him, and he wouldn't call her back. He wouldn't answer. That's like a red. There's so many red flags right. in this scenario. Like. Right. And she's like, he won't answer the phone when I call, and her friend was like, he doesn't know my number. That's and a good friend right there. Right, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, hey, what's up? Avery! Where is he? Hold up, hold up. He's whisk. Did he text you? <laughs> Should I call mine? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Am I pretty? Pretty crazy. <laughs> Wait, I need to call mine Thanks now. Thanks for answering, though. Let's see. You better answer the phone. It's already been two rings. <laughs> I'm gonna show up. <laughs> No! You Dang want, it. You want me to have you call Avery? You want to call Avery? I just, hey, <laughs> I just want to say hi. Can you tell Chloe she's pretty? Zach didn't answer. I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you permission. It's okay, you can tell her she's pretty. No! <laughs> this feels like a trap. <laughs> I love you That's so a good much. husband right there. I love you, okay, bye. So good apple or bad apple? Um, I'm going good apple. Good apple. Because, you know, she, she I don't think she did anything extraordinary. You know, she, she saw didn't. something that whether it raised a red flag or she was just wanted to say, ha ha, look, guess what I saw. Yeah. Because I would do that. Literally, I see something weird on the side of the road. I'm like, let me call Avery and tell him about it. Yeah. Like, what yeah. But then his actions made her skeptical. Her Which friend is was why like, she's doing exactly. what she's doing. Then like, her friend was like, I'll call him. He said he was busy. That's why he couldn't talk. He didn't know the number, and he answered. If Avery doesn't know the number, that that's going to voicemail. Well, we can't forget he was like supposed lying to be about going right, to boot right, camp, and right. then like, oh, I just want to break up. I didn't want right. you to like become more exactly like, like he's supposed to be at the military. Then leave, and he answered, and he was like so caught off guard, and then was like, oh, I gotta go. So she just drove by to see if he was lying about the car thing. That's it. She just wanted to drive by and see yeah. if the car was there or not. not like she got binoculars. Exactly. And like, Look through the exactly. windows. Exactly, and it was there. She yep. knew he lied, so she showed up to try and talk to him about it. Like, she wasn't even trying to go and talk to his family. She wanted to talk to him. Is he really in the, the military? I do think that he was only because they tried to talk to his dad. Like, when they told his dad what was going on, the only thing that he was like, I didn't know that he had a girlfriend, but he didn't say... He's not in the military. <laughs> like, I feel like his dad would have thrown him under the bus so quick. Would've, that would have been a plot twist. But Definitely good apple, though. But that also means we're cursed. <laughs> so we both got two good apples, one bad apple, and one crab apple. How long will this go on for? It honestly, it just happens by chance. But. Did you guys get similar answers? Did you guys get something different? Is there a different perspective or lens that you guys are thinking of that we just haven't? Because again, remember, we learn from each other through conversation. We all come from different walks of life and that's okay. If you disagreed with us on anything, just let us know in the comments. As always, if you want to submit one of your stories for a future Am I the Bad Apple episode, you can do so at my subreddit r slash am I the bad apple. And whether you're on your way to work tomorrow or school or wherever it is that you go, I hope that you see a cute little puppy being walked by their owner. Just happy as a clam going about his business. That's the best way to start the day off, right? It really is. <gasps> Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that you guys are here. I'm so glad that you got to meet my amazing friend, <laughs> Chloe. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, my lovelies. Bye. Bye.